Sydney to me is New York and Los Angeles all mixed together. Why would you want to play anywhere else? You know, it's the best. Geographically, it's perfectly located. It's adjacent city in the United States. The reputation of the club built over decades by a lot of people before me, so I stand on their shoulders. Sydney's falling back in love with the Sydney Kings, and it's falling back in love with basketball. Everyone loves purple. They say they don't, they do. We're the New York Yankees of Australian basketball. Everyone hates the Yankees, but they love the pinstripes. That's who we are. We're the best. This is Sydney. Like, it's a winner's town, OK? Hoops capital is a place. It's a state of mind, and we own it. So we know we are the Hoops capital. We own it, we trademarked it. Yes, we can win the championship. The season hasn't started yet, so 10 teams can win the championship. That's, everyone thinks they can win the championship. Or they think I'm a shot, so I'm a shot, right? Yeah, we can win the championship. The Sydney Kings see themselves as flying the flag for the sport in Australia by representing what the Kings see as the best state in Australia, New South Wales, and the best city in Australia, sure. Sydney. I think the Kings were the most marketable team in the NBL in the 90s, playing in front of packed out stadiums. With Damian Keogh, Tim Morrissey, the Dalton brothers. So, you know, there were a lot of players that were stars in Sydney. So back in the 90s, the Kings promised so much. They ticked so many boxes, entertainment, big personalities, sell out crowds, except they weren't winning championships. And before too long, expectations not delivered on resulted in them being called the Violet Crumbles. What a fairy tale it's been for Gulagian and the Sydney Kings after the team was in receivership at the start of the season. But we're closing in on tip off. As soon as Brian Gorgian came, it was there was a feeling like Sydney's finally going to start winning. When Brian Gorgian comes, people expect him to win. Even the players that play for him, they know that they're going to win if they do it his way. Their 16-year odyssey in the National Basketball League, once described as the worst sporting team in Australia, well, they've sent the critics away and have captured the National Basketball League grand final. People flocked pretty quickly. It was the start of winning three championships in a row. The Sydney Kings, with an unprecedented three-peat, have become Australian sporting royalty. So finally, the Kings are winning championships, and we all think, great, they're delivering on this potential that hasn't been realised for so long. But before too long, we start to hear that behind the scenes, ends aren't being met. People weren't getting paid. It was a disaster. And at the end of the day, they threw the licence in, and there was no Sydney Kings for a number of years. The NBL has been forced to defend itself following the collapse of the Sydney Kings today. The league terminated the flagship club's licence. Bringing... I was shattered when the Kings, you know, folded things up. I was really in disbelief. You know, it was like one of those life-changing things for me. The team that I came to play for, the team that had such proud history, all of a sudden wasn't here. It didn't seem like the league was the same without a team from Sydney. They were out for a couple of years and when the Kings returned, it was like something was missing from the glitz and the glamour of the 80s and 90s when the Kings and the NBL were really flying. They were 24 up. They haven't got a rock solid history, the Sydney Kings. I don't like to criticise anybody that puts their hand in their pocket, puts their money where their mouth is and supports a team and gets a team back up into the league. But I just don't think they had the personnel to win. You know, it was the only time they made the playoffs was my first year in about a seven-year period. You know, they turned through a whole lot of coaches, and I took over from Moose for a beard, and then uh, I decided not to do it after my second year. Damien Cotter came on, and the list goes on. Sydney siders were saying, well, give us reasons to get excited. We want to buy into this team. Take us back to the glory days. Well, i got to start with Paul Smith. You know, he's the mastermind. He's the one that has the vision. He's the one that can put all the pieces together, and he did just that. He is a basketball lunatic. You know, I, I don't know how any other way to put it. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, I'm disruptive. I'm a troublemaker. Uh, I know it, and that's been my nature. Um, I have foibles, um, many of them, but I'm passionate. Yeah, yeah. Look. I want to place a bet and win it. I want to care a little more about my fitness. I want every wish I flicked into a fountain to be existing. 
When I first got here, we had Bogues, we had Kevin Lish, we had Brad Kicks, we had a bunch of big names in the NBL, especially with Bogues. Our attendance when I first got here was pretty much 10,000 every game and probably 8,000 were for Bogues. I want a lot of things. I feel entitled, feel inside that life has got to bring me things my way. This king will play, I'm not a win. I like the Paul Smith for Hoops Capital on the baseline. Part troll, part not. We have the best arena in the NBL. We have the most passionate owners in the NBL. And I like what we're doing, I like where we're at. We have pretty good teams every season, so we'll continue to build. We know uh, the history, the impact that they have on this league. Truly thankful and uh, you know, blessed and honored to wear this Kings uh, jersey. Adams throw it up there for Jarrell Martin. Some energy back inside, Kudos Bank Arena. I mean, it's the main club in the hoops capital of, the, of Australia, right? I hear some of the stories about the teams of old, and you know, obviously Sydney's a, a little bit of a Hollywood-style city, so they, they want a, a fun style of play. I don't know if uh, Hollywood fits my personality, but I think, you know, hopefully compete for championships is something I'm not foreign to, and hopefully we can continue that tradition for sure. In NBL News Now, this weekend sees the NBL season kick off. All eyes are on new Sydney Kings coach Chase Buford in his first Kings game. Kings will take on defending champions Melbourne United at Kudos Bank Arena. There's a lot of question marks about the Sydney Kings. I think they can make the playoffs, but there's still so much water to go under the bridge before they can win a championship. They've got a quality coach, quality imports, but can they get it done? Yeah. School them like a headmaster. Crosshairs locked on a dress box. X on a page like a red marker. We can see a eye to eye like a next partner. On number two, stop taking a number two. Bad joke. <laughs> 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 Going on at the top tonight, fellas. Make them feel us from the get-go. Get it. Close the gap, blow it up, and rebound. Defense on three. One, two, three, defense. We're underway at Kudos Bank Arena. Kings! You know, I said I'm ready for the war, ready for the drama. It's a zoo. I'm a silent, even rust of the llama. And RJ Hunter. Frustration on the face of Dean Vickerman. Xavier Cook's on his way to the hoop. They're starting to put their foot down now, the Kings. Next play, next play, here we go. Sydney have done enough. They look like this was the beginning of a new era and they just could <laughs> run away with it. And they start NBL 22 with a win, 79-74. We're really proud. Played hard, came in there, we did what we needed to do. Hey, we we'll have to do the full 40 minutes next time. Yeah, huh? Chase up. Congratulations, 21st. Yeah, Chase! Yeah. 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 Get that suitcase! Here we go! Preschooling walk past our locker room in Melbourne. It's quiet in there. They can hear us. They can hear us. It's amazing. <laughs> Yes, joining us, Sydney Kings owner Paul Smith. Morning, Paul. Morning, fellas. Good morning to listeners. Yeah, Paul's going to ask, what, what can fans expect? We're up against our arch rivals, the scumbags from Illawarra. And so <laughs> we're, we're ready to take them on. And I've told Chase Buford, as a, I grew up down that area, I said, leave nothing in the tank, mate. No secrets. I want everything thrown at those, those idiots. What came out about <laughs> scumbags and idiots kind of took me by, but I thought, you know, throw those punches and let's get this thing going. We've got their attention. The Sydney Kings Illawarra Hawks rivalry is a fantastic sporting rivalry and I've seen many of them. And this year, an Illawarra businessman, Paul Smith, is now involved as owner of the Sydney Kings and Dori Kordahi, a Sydney businessman and Kings identity, has an ownership share in the Hawks. Now, they haven't got a lot of time for each other. No one likes their neighbour. That's why we have fences. There's no fence between Sydney and Wollongong, unfortunately, so it's genuinely real. There's a factor of competitiveness in it. Even when we're flogging Illawarra or they're flogging us, there's still a lot of hate. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of that emotion bubbling under the surface. I think it's the biggest rivalry because it's, it's not manufactured. It's been going for a long time, and the two teams just rub up against each other. It's a battle for the pride of the state. Tell me your, about your relationship with Dory. Who? Dory. Oh, uh, Dory, Dory, Dory. Oh, yeah, him, yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, 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 what about him? I don't have a relationship with him. 
It's not a relationship. All we can do is focus on what we do and focus on our game and focus on training and focus on our, on our, on our pre-season. And, you know, the, and the rest will be history. And, you know, end of the season, we'll see where we end up. I think the most important thing, again, when basketball's at its best, the rivalries are strong. Coming into this year, we're just like them. You know, we want to be the best team in the city, so it starts with beating Sydney. All right, fellas, just, just a quick one here. While, while, while you're eating, you can continue to eat, but uh, Dory would like to say a few words. Yeah, look, you know, just, um, you know, I'm excited about this season. I know Gorge is excited. You know, we've got bigger aspirations. You know, we want to be a powerhouse. You know, we've heard, you know, the Kings say what they've said about us. Um, you know, we want to take it to them and, you know, be the powerhouse of New South Wales. Um, but we also want to build on what, what, what we've done as well. So for us, it's all about culture. It's something that Brian will t always talk about. It's culture and something we want to sort of um, build within this team, from, you know, from our commercial team to our basketball team. We're all in one, we're all in one race together and we need both, both teams to be firing away. And I think this year's changing that and taking it to another level. Um, I'm really excited about this season. So let's have fun doing what we do and enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Welcome to round two. The time for talking is done. Fierce rivals ready to resume hostilities. This is the Sydney Kings and Illawarra Hawks. Well, it all started with a bit of banter between the two owners, but then it turned really serious. Paul Smith said of his opposite, he's dismissive of league staff, he's loose with protocols and disrespectful to people around the league. Dory Kordahi, who we just saw a shot of, said that is bordering on defamation of character and that Sydney are jealous, they're insecure, and I'm going to stay classy, I'll let the pigs roll in the mud. I've always been respectful of the league. For me, I'm not going to get down and play those sort of those games and slander people. I'd just keep it nice and clean. There's no doubt that there's some big egos there, and they certainly want to be the the big dogs in town. We look at them as their little brothers, and they they don't like that title. No one wants to be called little brothers, so it's legit. The Sydney boys want to think they're the big dogs of the town. I think they're worried that the small town of Wollongong might uh, overtake them, and the fan base is a bit better than theirs. I mean, Illawarra is one of the best teams in the league, and so are we. Tomorrow. So. You know, whoever wins the first game kind of sets the tone for the rest of the season. And we play each other four times, so it'll be like kind of a good test to go, to, you know, to begin the season with. As simple as it can be, which locker room do you want to be in? No question who's the better basketball team. It's up to us. They are going to fight tooth and nail, all right? And they're going to do everything they can to win the game. All right, fellas, start with the defensive end tonight. All night, make them feel us, all right? Rebound and run, let's go have some fun. Here we go. Defense on three. One, two, three, defense. Meeting number 103 between the Sydney Kings and the Illawarra Hawks, but we can't remember a freeway series match that's been as spicy as this in the lead up. Here we go. Took us all of four minutes. We were good early. Stay with that. This is going to be a grind. Swakala bullet deep, big rebound, Maker took the contact. Back to the basket on Froling. It's been spicy all week long, and at halftime, three points separate these two teams. Are we back? Are we all sprinting back in a ship? Are we stabbing again, Wally? Get back and get in our ships. Be solid, be who we are, and then rebound the ball. That's two more points they shouldn't have. Antonius Cleveland glides through the key. This has been a game of runs, and Illawarra are making a decisive one right now. Looks ahead. Oh, wow. Harvey stepping back on Bruce. Oh, my. Fellas, we got a rebound. Froling says good night. The rivalry series has delivered. Done, done, done. Back First match of the freeway series in NBL 22 goes the way of the Hawks. 
Well, guys, Chase, I'll throw the first question at you. Um, what were your thoughts on that, that scuffle at the end of the match? I don't have much Any thoughts on it at all. No thoughts. Did the, the pre-game noise in regards to the, the to and fro between the owners, did that have any effect during the match? None whatsoever. That's all. Thank you. The freeway series had a fantastic start. It was tight, it was tough, it was a tussle from the start to the finish and both sides left the court that night thinking, well, we've only enhanced our championship claims with that performance. But for Sydney, the next stop was Melbourne and that was diabolical. How's that for a dream start? A bucket in four seconds. Go, run, run! Delamadova for three. Look at Melbourne go! It is raining threes! records are tumbling, but unfortunately for the Kings, it's for all the wrong reasons. Their second lowest score in 978 Hungry Jacks NBL games. Coach, they got no answers right now. Ariel Hukpoli smashes it down. United extract revenge in the best possible way. A 42-point win. This proud basketball club have been belted we got to come out with a, an awareness and an intensity that matches the other team. Because we did, again, in the jump ball, they, we'd tip it and go right to them and lay it up and never got there. All right? Heads up. Heads up. Hey, this is over. we got to go get they were ready to play one Saturday. To get beat that badly is like a boxer just getting destroyed and never being able to recover and have that invincible feeling anymore. They got their pants pulled down. It was embarrassing. always pressure on the Sydney Kings and when you go to Wollongong and you go down and play against little brother they always want to throw a haymaker the whole town rallies behind the Sydney Kings so there was no doubt there's pressure on the Kings. Cooks had his shot partially blocked. Now Harvey feeling good about himself goes whack whack. Oh my. Throwing why not? Why not? Harvey for three. No more threes for that dude. Get in this, don't let us see the light of day. And the Hawkeyes are trying everything to get the home team going. The Hawks will take care of the result now. Hawkeyes on their feet. Illawarra go 2 0 up in the freeway series. You guys were terrific down the stretch. Really Thanks. good. You too. We'll see you soon. Kings again started the season telling us they were going to be championship contenders, but it was a it was a rough start. And when the results didn't add up in terms of a string of uh, consistent successes early on, there are a few sideways glances with people saying, "Here go the Kings again, promising the world and probably not going to deliver too much." Sydney Kings right now are a bad news story. Mm. Oh, good. Right now they sit eighth. On the standings, um, this is a team that came into the season, curiously enough, as the championship favourites. I never really quite understand that. Are they yes. done? Are they, get them out of here? Get them out of here. Done. Done. It's over. It's over. Ooh. Without doubt, you feel sorry for Chase Buford with the amount of players that he's got out. You go to Melbourne and lose by 40 points, people don't give you sort of you know, any tissues or feel for you at all when you lose by a lot of points to Melbourne. But they had three imports out and DJ on uh, minutes restrictions, always going to be tough to be able to do it. For, but for Chase, in his first gig, it was always tough. Get into him, get into him. Try not to, to live with regrets, just, you know, make a decision and, and go forward the full steam ahead. And even the low moments, it's about figuring out how to get the team better and how to get the team right and how to get our, ourselves right. It's a pretty high pressure job, head coach of the Sydney Kings. Um, my take on Chase is what you see is what you get. I'd, I'd back myself to play poker against Chase. I think he's, you know, but I, I like that. I, I like that openness and, you know, in hiring Chase, one of the clear messages I gave him is I wanted him to be himself. I always joke with Chase, you know, like, if you ever see the tweet, Chase has the full support of the board, then then you've got to worry. 
<laughs> well, I didn't know much about Chase until I had to look him up. What I did know, he was R.C. Buford's son. Chase is part of basketball royalty because of RC, who's held a number of high-ranking executive positions at a number of successful clubs, none more so than the San Antonio Spurs. When you come from that sort of pedigree and you grow up in the industry, you know a lot of people and you get to learn a lot of great things, particularly from Popovich, but also his dad. And you bring somebody in that, whilst young, had a lot of experience for his age as well. Stop! Stop! Thank you! Stop, Ray, hey. stop. I remember distinctly as a 10-year-old in the locker room in New York, in the garden, getting to be a part of the San Antonio teams in the 90s that were really good. Tim Duncan winning the championship in 99. You know, loving going to games as a young kid, just getting to be around the gym and the, the atmosphere. You, you probably grow up a little spoiled, and the more I got to be around it, the more I loved the, the competitive side of it in sports and kind of in, in, innate a little bit at the end of the day, just being around it so much, you grow a love for it. Get a little hot over here. Get on a roll now. Game over. Lost. <laughs> no, I do not like losing. Uh, but losing at this is a lot easier than losing in, a, in an NBL game. We're all giving up offensive rebounds. We got the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers of the worst get offense in the league. They hung 50 on us. 50! Really, really important aspect for us is we want someone that's fiery and vocal and passionate and sometimes crosses the line. So be it. We're really back in. But we, we definitely want that for club. Yeah, there was definitely a time, you know, where I was searching for myself and what I loved in life, and I ended up losing my best friend in a car crash, and I was just flatlined and didn't know what to do with my life, and got a job in sales working for a Formula One racetrack in Austin when they brought the Grand Prix back to the stage. But after about a year working in sales, I realized oh, this is miserable. I hate it. I need to go back to basketball as soon as I can. Glad I, I came back to basketball at the end of the day. So the Kings head into a round nine game against Perth and the Kings are talking big and have talked big but are yet to really walk that walk. Against Perth, here's their chance. Uh, I think we all believe that we're a good team and, you know, we get better every day, uh, keep growing chemistry. We've been dealing with a lot of injuries, you know, so we're just going out there and we're going to play our best defense, our best defensive game uh, and try to come out with the win. We've got to start stringing some wins together because four and six isn't going to cut it. Um, and Perth's the cream of the crop, you know what I mean? They're the, one of the best teams for the last 30 years. It's going to be a good test for us. Um, they're a great team, and I'm excited for it. We're growing fast. We're starting to find identity. You know, we've had a lot of adversity, obviously, but uh, identity is a lot of how you play and your identity on the court um, dictates how you go. And I think our identity is becoming clearer and clearer to us. We're not there yet, but we're growing, we're growing fast, and um, I don't think anyone should sleep on us. Martin stepping out for three. What a block. Transition for the Sydney Kings. They're going to need that. Big block over the back. There's no help for my heart. Hot start to the game for Jalen Adams. He's got ten. What are we doing? This has been some sort of half from the home hey, team. Man. Biggest thing offensively, let's not get stagnant versus their switches. The pockets are there. Keep trusting those bigs. Keep rolling, keep throwing it in. Something's not to Hodgson because he's going to be spending some time on the sideline, I suspect. There's nothing in that unless it comes down to what was said. We have a disqualifying foul, white 18. It's gone. Just a total overreaction from Matt Hodgson. Adams fouled, and it's going to count. Sydney winners today, 96 to 81. Five and six on the season, and they remain around the mark. But great job staying together. Great job staying true to what we do. 
when we needed it, when, when, when it was on the line, what do we say? Win. Stops, right? Yeah. Defense is what's going to carry us. And that's what got it done. Really proud of you guys. Good job. Yeah. I think when you look at a team and when they start being successful, you see why they're being successful. And they were doing all the little things. They're grabbing offensive rebounds. They're getting important stops. And I think when they beat the Perth Wildcats, that's a confidence thing in this league. If you can beat the Perth Wildcats, you have arrived. Brisbane have not won in Sydney since December 2017. They lead by two. Jalen Adams has had a tough day. I'd heard that Jalen Adams was a special player from Chase and from Chris Pongrass before he took the call. Gets to the basket! Oh, oh my goodness, Jalen Adams! What a play! One to come! They don't have any timeouts, no foul! They were down and he missed the free throw, got the rebound. He misses! Loose ball, Sydney get it back and win the game! Oh my, are you kidding me? Jalen Adams is worth every dollar that they're paying him! It didn't take long after that where you go, oh, this guy's big. He makes big plays at the right times. The Kings could win it with this possession. Take the last shot. Adams has hit a man. Step back three. A oh, oh, heartbreaker. He is legit. And then they started to go, and then everyone then goes, oh, the Sydney Kings are OK. Six in a row for the Sydney Kings. We are dogs. Attack dogs. Let's keep being dogs. Let's go. Been the start of the show. Can he have the finishing touch? Jalen down seven straight road wins now. Eight straight road wins, isn't it, Matty? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Sorry, not to call you out. Adams is going to push. Ten in a row for the Sydney Kings. And then they go on a 13, 14 game winning streak. Oh, they're the greatest. Dodging the naysayers, I'm moving distractions. You can copy the fashion, but not the passion. Tell me who your favorite and sit back while I blast them. Tell me who your favorite, you can watch as I pass them. Watch as they check out and up in the bag up. Killing them all, give me a hand while I tap. Chase Beefin and his men have won 13 in a row. Oh, you guys have seen how many tough shots did Tyler Harvey hit tonight, boy? Woo! It's the final round of the regular season. The Sydney Kings host the Illawarra Hawks. Chase Buford has opted to rest league MVP favourite Jalen Adams. The winner of today's game will finish second and host the other team in the semi-finals. This rivalry has developed already because we've had some fiery tough competition on and off the floor and there's a respectability on both sides. They're a, a tremendous team but we've held our own over the two year period and now we're starting to build something special. I think the pressure's on the Hawks. If you take the potential MVP out of this squad and then they still beat you, that's a massive psychological advantage heading towards the semi-finals. This is going to be huge. Jessup works to the elbow, fires, and he comes up with the goods. And Harvey drills another triple. Jessup feeling good about himself, and that's why. Three threes right in our grill. We're great on the run. They can't deal with the movement. Tony as Cleveland gets the steal. That's so bad. That's that is so bad. NBL sucks. We gotta lock in. We gotta get some stops. We gotta find shooters. Stay down on our closeouts. Stick hand diligence. Get out there. Get a hand. Make them into drivers, but stay in front. All right. We gotta take some one-on-one -on -one pride in our individual defense. Here's a big play. Lava knocks down the three, and the Sydney Kings are charging back into the equation. No, hey! Up, 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 right there. 3.3 on the clock. Kings restart. Clark got a look at it. He stepped out of court. He's knocked down. The shot is going to be waved away. Oh, my. Stepping out. Sydney down three. Baseball pass to restart. But Sydney has got it off, but it wasn't that far away. 
Great game, AC. Yeah, are we ready for three more of those? Hell of a game, fellas. Hell of a game. And game, Illawarra claims second spot. Home court advantage when these two Thanks, squads go at Thank each other in the first round of the finals. Thank you, guys. With the Hawks winning the fourth game, it set up such a juicy matchup in the playoffs. To be able to have Sydney and Illawarra playing off for a spot to go into the title, a lot of people thought that was going to be the grand final game. And uh, here they are, do or die, being able to get that done. I feel great about our team, but I feel great, more great about the game of basketball and this rivalry now. It's going to be on three games. For me personally, much more important than anything else is what's going on here now. Class organization, 20,000 people. We're trying to make something happen and bring it to the table and create what's coming. Whew.